Hi there, I thought I'd show you the Psychonauts, the original, on the Steam Deck, as this is a game that has some controller issues. It doesn't matter if you play the Linux native version or the it through Proton, both seem to have the same issue where it doesn't properly register the Xbox controller that the Steam Deck should be emulating. You can see here straight away from the main menu, even though I have gamepad selected, that it's asking me to press the spacebar. It does still work to some degree, like I can move around the character and I can resume the game, but you'll quickly see that once we're actually inside the game, there are all sorts of oddities. So. For example, the buttons work, but they're in the wrong order. And if I use like the focus mode, it actually spins the camera and then gets stuck in a spinning loop, even though I'm not touching anything. And the same with the other camera, like panning in, it just seems to get stuck. It's a very odd issue. And also the menu buttons do like actions and and uh, powers and so you've got no way of actually kind of getting to the menus or actually properly navigating the menu as far as I can tell it's um, it's just messed up so what can we do about it well I've created uh, some layouts and shared them but obviously you can make your own and the answer is to use uh, the keyboard layout because um, you can see that even though we have with the gamepad selected, it still shows what uh, keyboard buttons to press. So we'll make use of that and bind it to the keyboard. Now one thing is that even though I've changed the layout, it's still stuck in this loop, so I'm gonna to have to quit the game. And um, so I will just go into the Steam and go force quit it. And then we can relaunch it again. Right pad click as a spacebar, as that's used a lot. Now, obviously, it can get confusing when you have bindings saying like Q, E, and also you get prompts to interact, um, which uh, will ask you keys that you don't have on the deck. So instead, what I've done is for my bindings, I've tried to make it less confusing by making it so you need to go in and rebind a few options. Now one of the other oddities is you if you're in the options menu you can use like d-pad up and down but once you get to this this page suddenly you can't use up and down arrows it's it's mouse only. This is so this is why I have the right pad as a mouse and space because you need literally need it for getting into these controls and options and so in bindings instead what I do is I leave the this one forward but instead I now bind jump to the letter A attack X use Y and cancel B. And so I'm I'm literally using the letters of the alphabet to match the characters on the Steam Deck. And this just helps with um when you, when you get prompts you don't have to think about what X actually maps to. Now obviously uh sadly there isn't a L1 key on a standard keyboard so instead I've done 
the powers I've done uh, F1, F2, and F3, which I think are pretty easy to remember as a so F1 maps to L1, F2 maps to R1, and F3 maps to R2. And that's the only thing you need to change. As all the rest uh, can be used. And once you've done that, now, now you can actually navigate the menu just using uh, the controllers. So, and you can see we now have actual proper control. So I can jump, tags, and use my powers. And I have fully played through the game using these bindings. I did originally create two layouts. Um, one which was um, one which was pure keyboard, so basically the left hand stick did um, up, down, left, right arrows for movement, and that works okay. Um, and uh, but it doesn't have that fine grain analog movement, which there are a couple of maps where you need to navigate through some kind of tri tricky obstacles and not being able to kind of gently navigate left and right made it pretty tricky. You see here the difference if I go here and just move, you can see I've got a lot of fine grained controls. Whereas if I switch to the pure keyboard layout. Now I've only got to the option to run full speed and I can't, I can only go either left, right or diagonals. I can't do any of the fine grain movements except for using the right stick to compensate. And you can see it's quite, it's quite uh, clunky when you've got to do some of the tight rope walking and other movements. But both of the bindings are there to try out. So you can see here, just by switching layouts mid-game, it's actually stopped now detecting the left-hand joystick. That's how finicky this game is. It really doesn't like the joystick changing at all. So if you're going to use an analog movement, then pick that layout and have it ready at the start of the game and don't mess with it. So for now, I'll just quickly switch back to the pure keyboard. When you're playing this game, um, you don't start with your powers, they'll come along later. And what you will need is you'll need the menu button. Now on my bindings, I've used the left hand pad for navigation. You can press up and down or left and right. And that lets you tab through the, your inventory. And when you're just playing the game, that same thing allows you to pick items that you need in the game or swap your powers out. You have multiple powers, but you can only have three active at any time and you will be swapping them out quite a bit. So you literally select the power and then press the key you want it to bind it to. And that's just um, using, as I say, the left and right hand track pads. Something worth mentioning is the L2 trigger. 
as this can feel like a control issue but is actually just a poor game design choice. L2 has two purposes in the game. It centers your camera and it also locks on to targets and enemies. The problem is having both on the same key means that you can be running away from a target, you go to lock on and instead it spins the camera around which can get very confusing. And you just have to get used to kind of the distances that you can lock on. There is a kind of hint where when you're in range of a target they will kind of glow like this. This is quite range because it's a friendly target but enemies also will glow at a slightly longer distance. So you just have to get used to watching for that glow before you lock onto a target otherwise you can find that your camera just violently spins away from where you actually want to look at. So that's it. I did complete the game. I had fun. My only probably gripe is that there are certain achievements which you need to do at very specific points in the game and if you didn't have a save game at near that point you're effectively a force to replay the game. It's that old problem of do you look up achievements before you go in and risk having certain stuff spoiled or do you go in blind and accept that you'll have to replay the game if you actually want to do achievement hunting? The choice is up to you. I'd probably say go in blind and just enjoy it.